pretty low downtime in between the matches. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well. We have a lot of games coming your way. It's our first one in this particular best of three series takes place on the stranges of strange maps. We find ourselves on post youth and in the bottom left hand corner, we have a battle B. In the upper right hand side is going to be our red Zerg. This is going to be Wayne. Wayne, of course. Playing this game for a very long time. Once upon a time, under the nickname of Vanya. Before that, Ratata. Or actually, it's the other way around, I think. I think he went from, Van from Vanya into Ratata. Vanya. He should have gone to Eradicate next, but... Yeah, he, he didn't evolve. Something happened. No. Well, he evolved to Wayne. Maybe yeah. it's a new generation. Yeah. <laughs> it's not It's not in the original 150, man. I'm not into it. <laughs> it's original form of Eradicate. I'm not into it at all. The good old ZVT right here on this map. We do have all the, uh, I think it's the Nova artwork, isn't it? Yeah, that's cool. A lot of cool art actually around these maps. There's, uh, there's a part where there's little, uh, the little dudes, the little bears are watching it. Yeah, yeah, they're watching it in many different uh, spots yeah. on the map. There you go. <laughs> what a life. You can actually hear it when you go past those, I'm sure. If you're an SCV, you're scouting across the map, you can hear them drumming. Look at those guys over here. <laughs> They're really close. My mom never allowed me to sit that close to the television. Did she not? No. Huh? She told me I would get square eyes. I don't know why, but apparently this is a common thing that Dutch parents would tell their children. If they sit too close to the TV, your eyes would turn into squares. I was like, mom, that makes no sense. But I remember very distinctly that that's what she told me, and I, I was scared enough to not sit too close to the TV. <laughs> <laughs> she really got you there, mate. <laughs> Good old Reaper Scout going across the map right now. Command Center, not on the low ground. I always autopilot here. I'm like, yeah, Command Center going down, not on the low ground. It's inside of the main base. <laughs> Caught myself this time around. Every, old, uh, every natural in StarCraft 2 is pretty much always down the ramp on the low ground, but not right here on post youth. Not right here. Reaper gets turned around and just has to go and find a different way to do something as Palabi does not find too much success. I'm surprised this map came in. I feel like this map is very Zerg friendly. It's it's decently sized. There's a gold base you can take. Don't get me wrong. Some of the pathways are mm -hmm. narrow and good to push up and down on. I just feel like you can get so many bases so quickly as a Zerg on this map. That unless you're super confident playing a very long game. Which, I mean, Battle B might be to some extent. Like I say, just kind of yeah. intrigued by the choice that this map makes it through. Yeah, I guess as a Zerg, you do have to spread the Creeper really far forward as quickly as possible. Because if you want to take that gold base, which is definitely going to be the base that Wayne will be eyeing here after the third. You need to get Creep up on that high ground, right? So sort of where that second Overlord is flying right now. That is a section It is a section of the map where you really do need to have Creep if you're... Not the other Overlord, a little bit further down south of this particular spot. Anyways, yeah. You need to get Creep up on this high ground if you want to defend against a lot of those big attacks yeah. from the Terran a little bit later. Because those Golden Minerals are so, so juicy. It is true, right? It's actually a pretty cool gold base where, like, you can take it. But it's actually very difficult to defend unless you're really dominating the game already. So taking the gold like super early is tough. Um, so in that way, it's kind of a nicely designed gold. Ooh, extra see. extra gas taken, by the way. Yeah, and then the road run, right? So maybe some aggression yeah. for Wayne. Absolutely. Very difficult to scout right here for Battle B. So it is link speed, by the way. He did not skip the Zerkling speed upgrade. So this could just be a Zerkling flood, although he now queues up six additional drones. That seems really early for a defensive Roach Warren, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lag coming up as well. I don't know. I hmm. mean, you get there a couple, maybe you just get two or three Roaches out. It's going to make sure that the Hellions can't really get by you or anything. And then you just head from there with the lair up. We can tech and do as we wish. And you see the few Lings just there to deflect the Reaper once again. So Wayne's defense is pretty much spot on so far. Not really letting anything kind of come through or, you know, punish. So in that regard, pretty decent. Absolutely. A little bit funky, though. That's for sure. We'll have to see exactly what Wayne does here in about a minute from now, as he will have access to that tech quite a bit sooner than what we normally see. Maybe not so much eyeing the golden minerals just yet, although he is posturing in that particular direction here. Another gas goes down. He's going for defensive spore crawlers right now against any sort of Benchy liberator play. Hellions trying to go up the ramp. I think they had an opportunity, by the way, when the queens were distracted on the right to go into the main base, but he didn't really know exactly how many lings were waiting. 
Yep. No, just no at all as you see it again. The uh, cloak coming up. And the stem coming through. Engineer and bay, a few extra barracks all continue to build. Obviously, just about they'll be happy to build up into that later stage. Get the bio pumping and get those pushes rolling. As Wayne is just going to drone, 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 man. Evo Champ is coming up. Mm -hmm. We'll have these Banshees, though, to contend with, so we'll get that uh, moving across right now. Yeah, interesting little opener. We see similar versions of this build all the time, but then without, for example, Link Speed and with a bit of a later Roach Warren. But I guess all of the roads eventually do lead towards a very similar position. This battle be is starting to work on those drones here for just a second. Golden Minerals indeed are going to be gathered here in just a moment. Additional Golden Minerals, I guess, because there's a few of those as well with that second base over inside of the main. Plus one, plus one for the Roaches coming right up. Yep, yeah, one on one missile upgrades, Roach be coming through. Hellions are going to go and hit a Roach for a couple of moments as well. So some wax over there. As our depots will continue to spread out. And again, we just get ourselves settled in. Those engineering bays getting up and rolling. And Wayne just building the infestation, but so he's so ready to play into Hive. Play into that late attack. Just going to be sending it for the moment. So yeah, it's kind of on battle minute Hive. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's, it's all it's greed from Wayne. exceptionally quick. Yeah. yeah, it's super greedy here. He's basically just playing the survival game, I guess. And so far, he's been able to get away with pretty much everything. His economy is... Uh, especially once these drones are starting to work on these minerals here, it's, it's going to be insane. That'll be really needs to figure out a way to shut this down. He's going into the armory, so he will be able to fire up plus two, plus two, nice and early. But if he's going for like a pretty standard 2-2 two, two timing attack, I've got a feeling he's going to be way outclassed by the Zerk army at that point. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm with you there as our missile and carapace upgrades continue through. That lurker den is very much so on the way up still from Wayne, so he, if he gets there, it's going to be tough for Battle B, but I really believe in Battle B knows that his opponent is being greedy to some extent and is ready to up something of yeah. an attack, because if he's not, then that is really kind of wild and a bit of a misread on his part. Very soon, we're going to be seeing Lurkers hit the battlefield. They're going to start up their ranged upgrades. Not even eight minutes into the game, it seems like. Going to be able to fire up 2-2. We can go into Vipers here as well. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for Battle B to win the game with just a Marine Marauder Siege Tank-based army. It's going to see the timing right now of the Infestation Pit. Yeah, starting up the Hive at this point in time wouldn't be too out of the ordinary, but he's not really punishing his opponent for the greed whatsoever. Nope. No punish at all. I mean, maybe now with this one push, but man, the creep spread is really out there. The Vipers are on the way. I just don't think Battle B gets to where he needs to be on time. It's just been such a passive game. You look at what's lost, right? It's, you know, very little. I mean, yeah. A of he, he forgot donated, combat yeah. shields, by the way. So oh, maybe no. that's why he ends up playing pretty passively here. He started up combat shields together with 2-2, two, two, which... I guess shuts down any attacks, right? Like, if you want to go for a timing with Terran, you really can't afford having less hit points on all of your Marines. Yep. No, oh, absolutely. The uh, lack of uh, combat shield just hurts so much, but it's on its way now. Once it finishes, it's there. But like you say, that might just cost you the ability to be aggressive before this point or at any point sooner, right? So definitely seems like a bit of a factor. And the extra look has come about. You know, the spore getting positioned. But this forward position is, is being broken down a little bit. We cancel a couple of the lurkers. Hello? We kill another one. So Balabi gets a couple of grabs. And so far, he's been able to take good trades because Wayne's not been able to utilize the tech that he's greeted into. He's not gotten the lurkers down just yet. The Vipers haven't shown up. Soon, this is going to change. But for the moment, it's been pretty well done. Oh, apparently requesting a quick little pause here. He's got Vipers done right now, too, by the way. There's a bunch of Vipers out in this game with loads of energy. Apparently, Wayne just needs to adjust one of his hotkeys really quickly. For the Lurker in particular. Yeah. Anyways, this is not going very smoothly for Battle because in a strange way... So it, it's kind of funny because it's not been a smooth engagement overall, I guess, for Wayne. Even though he's had the superior army overall. So here's... Oh my god, some big blinding clouds, some good abductions as well. That's a painful exchange for the Terran. Yeah, you lose, uh, you take a couple of losses there. Battle B, again, had a few good moments leading into this. Now it's going to die off that little bit. It's going to be seeing 2 2 upgrades going through. The Lurkers, Hydras, Lings all on the way. Ghosts are coming up. And I'm just going to get all of that ready right now. As, I mean, he's going to need that tech. He's going to need those ghosts to be able to truly fight this Zerg army later on. Right now, he's gone down to four bases. The next challenge for Battle B will be obviously pushing out a base number five. That's a more exposed position. That's going to be a little bit tougher to do. That's something we've not gotten to just yet. 
Okay, here come the lurkers. Those lurkers are aiming for a good position over here. And like you were saying, without Ghost, it's going to be really difficult to fight this. Although up this choke point into a whole load of siege tanks is tricky too. One snipe does end up going down. And you know what? Battle B survives there. I wonder how much of that has to do with the fact that he, he managed to kill, what was it? Three lurkers just about a minute ago without combat shields and all that, right? Like he grabbed a bunch of them for essentially free. Those units are so pivotal here. And that may have actually just taken the wind out of Wayne's sails here. He may have just yeah, been forced to slow down this game a lot more. I think he had real potential to win the game with that first big swell of lurkers, but now he's forced to play it all a little bit slower. Well, we're just going to be uh, having ourselves the a little bit of a reposition. I'm kind of with you, right? This idea of, like, I think losing a couple of lurkers makes a big difference there, but also... I do feel as though Wayne kind of went all from one direction. Like, there's other ways he could have moved. Yeah. He didn't have to just come through that one single choke point. So, yeah, definitely a, an interesting Absolutely, one. he could have split off at least a little bit on the right side. Now he's going to go up against a Terran player, though, who will have access to plenty of ghosts. Plus three, plus three is coming up here as well for Battle B. He has started building up all of those orbital commands. At the very least, we're at the beginning of that right now, where he's adding on two additional command centers. Usually they start up right around this time when the Terran is about to max out. And ultimately you're looking for about a dozen of them as Terran. You're now forced to play that macro game. Maybe Battle B didn't originally plan on doing that either, much like Wayne, but he is forced into that position because of that delay on the combat shield research. Any sort of timing attack from there has been slowed down significantly. So we'll get to see exactly what late game TVZ looks like on post youth. Yeah, again, uh, see a little bit of that is going to be pretty cool. So it's going to be a nice little uh, opportunity to kind of, again, see the later stages, see something that we've not uh, necessarily been seeing too much of. There's been a lot of faster games today, and when they've gone long, it's kind of been from weirder positions. I just kind of feel like Wayne's doing the right thing in terms of turning a lot of them out. You know, the right side's completely covered. He's got access to those upper left bases very easily too, and that's why I'm worried a bit for Battle B. If he doesn't get towards a fifth base soon, he's going to struggle to deny those forward bases being taken by the Zerg. And then the Zerg is very likely mm -hmm. to steal bases away from the Terran very easily. So, expecting that to be a, a little bit of a factor as our Hling Hydra Lurker sets up in the center just for a few moments, but nothing coming of it just yet. We were talking about how it can be quite difficult for Zerg to defend the gold base. Well, likewise, the same thing can be said for Terran here too, unless we send everything down a choke point. Wayne setting up shop, though, with the Lurkers right here on the high ground is very tricky for Battle B to break. He is going into that uh, that Liberator transition right now, so additional starports are coming. But we're a while away from Liberator ranged and really, like, you know, about a dozen of those units flying around the map. And getting, yeah, getting additional bases from this position is indeed quite complex, but he fires up three additional command centers. Knight is worm, by the way, not going into the main base where we sort of expected it to be. Instead, we're just using it to reposition a bunch of units and to, yeah, transfer everything around the map. Double Spire coming up. We've had a bunch of Infestors added into the mix as well. So we've kind of like skipped the early and mid game or we're just going straight to late game here, Marty. Yeah, no, we are absolutely right and ready to duel in these later stages. Couple of Vikings, couple of Liberators all coming about. The tanks are on the way as well. So all of that coming through. We are just getting ourselves settled down as the Hydra Lurker all gets gathered together as well. Just wait to see how this goes. Couple Very ambitious about. siege tank over here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. he, he's on he a journey, all mate. The way around. <laughs> he was off on a journey. No stopping him. Well, a couple of times get to come through and they land on the lurk. Is this gold base being taken? I like it because, again, it stretches you out to a base that realistically you just need at some point here as the Terran player. So, Battle be getting away with that is a big deal. I think Wayne should, again, definitely prioritize taking the top right, uh, bottom right and top left. Yes. You can't take all those bases, but mine as much from there as you can, because those are the bases that are going to become contested later. Those are the bases you want to take advantage of now, while the Terran player is clearly focusing in the middle of the map instead. Yeah, I also think we could see a 1-2 punch right here with the Lurker going up into the main base, distracting the bulk of that Terran army. Would have been a perfect opportunity to maybe try and commit to a fight over at the gold base, or at the very least try and hit the Terran somewhere where they may not be looking at that time. Instead though, Wayne just throws it up into the main base and... Well, forced to back off just a tad. We do indeed have the Greater Spire on the back of this, and there's also the Fusion Core for that ranged upgrade. With the new patch, the ranged upgrade for the Liberators has been reduced by one, which is actually quite significant. Yep. Range is a, uh, a big deal. So, uh, in the range setup, just going to be seeing the uh, 
for a spy coming through, plus two melee, plus three carapace. I mean, th this really is just going later and later and deeper and deeper. This is not one that's going to get resolved immediately because the banks are building up as well. So we are absolutely seeing this just develop into that late game duel. Like I said, I think Balabi must have been hmm. fairly confident to go there because he lets this map come through. And if you let this map come through, you've got to know that this is a real possibility. So I really think he was yeah. kind of okay with it. So like I say, if that's the case, then hell yeah, let's show you know show us why Battleby. Show me why you're okay with playing this map that is generally good for Zerg. You know, show us why you're okay about it. I think Wayne should really ooh, big fungal growth over here. Grabs a bunch of those Terra units. Not bad whatsoever. I think Wayne should really be considering taking that base all the way in the bottom right hand corner. Ultimately, a lot of these games are decided by the Zerg player stealing what was originally intended to be one of the Terran spaces. Right now, he did put a Nidus Worm in the exact location where the hatchery is supposed to go, but I really think one of his goals should be to try and mine out one of those bases quickly, because Battleby is not going to be able to easily split up his army to defend both this base right over here on the far left and then also the one in the bottom right hand corner. So Wayne can certainly make use of that much more mobile Zerg army at this point. I think instead he's trying to catch the Terran off guard with tech transitions. So he's ready to now suddenly whip out a whole bunch of Brute Lords. Those Brute Lords are going to be powerful, but we already have a lot of ghosts. Infernal Pre-Igniter coming up too. That's going to be... Well, he doesn't have to supply for it right now, but... He's gonna be ready, I guess, to make a bunch of Hellbats and really... Okay, now he shut down his own Nidus Worm there. He killed it so he can make the hatch <laughs> there, but... Yeah, he's gonna need to make some decisions here very soon, because... Slowly but surely, Battleby is uh, gonna mine out those bases on the left. And after the bases on the left side are mined out in about 5 to 10 minutes, he's got his eyes set on the bottom right. Yep, and that uh, settled down as Infernal Pregniter and all of our upgrades continue through, including that... Uh... Little cheeky uh, fusion coil upgrade. Is that the Caduceus reactor? Is that what we call it? If I remember. Yes. Yeah. It's um. That is it. It's it's a late game upgrade. You know, you may as well get it at this point. The game is generally the consensus, so we are gonna get to see that. And uh, yeah, we just developed this game deeper and later, and this is gonna be a fight for game just bases on the map. Right now, Wayne is doing a great job. I think of just taking bases around the map, but that's not to say that Battle B can't force his way into those positions at some point and to take them back. An interesting position here, for sure. So that'll be apparently comfortable to play this much more turtley style that we do see from the top tier Terrans all the time. Maro is a big fan of this play style. Obviously, Clem has been doing it a lot. Bion has been doing it, right? Like all the top tier Terrans, the ones that we see play all the time, they love playing this passively. It's just also really easy for Terran to slip up and accidentally make a mistake. Like say, for example, you're not prepared against the fungal growth. Keep in mind that those infestors have additional range now it's very easy to just lose all of your ghosts. And when you lose all of your ghosts, you essentially end up losing the game. So you have to be super cautious. Tactical nuke here. I Okay, that's for style points, I guess. Fair enough. Looks cool. Well, I mean, put some pressure Could've on that Could have just killed base. it, I think, with the ghost. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. This is for the fans. This one's for you guys. Hey, maybe he's just like, if I launch the nuke, he'll be concerned where it is and he'll look everywhere. Maybe he likes that part of it, but... I mean, I like that he's putting attention to this base. Even just the sign of that already, I think, is a, a good sign. So, yeah. very into that as we continue through and wait for the next move to be made between these guys. Wait to see what that might be. I mean, realistically, neither player really wants to fight right now because they're happy and happy just setting up later and later into this game. Again, becoming the aggressor at this stage typically makes you or sets you up in the worst position. So, that's probably what they're avoiding. Again, just slowly take down these bases and, uh, so, you know. Passing your seatbelts, guys, because we're in for kind of a long ride right now. Absolutely. There's still one expansion, too, by the way, in the top left-hand corner. There's a, another yeah, another expansion that needs to be decided here later on. Battle B has not really been checking for it. Okay, Wayne is going to be taking it right now. I think it's absolutely critical for one of those bases, if the Zerk wants to win at the very least, for one of those bases to go in favor of the Zerk. Mm -hmm. So the reasoning for it is pretty straightforward. Generally speaking, a late game Zerg does not trade quite as efficiently as Terran late game. Unless your name is Sero, I guess. He tends to uh, be very efficient with those spellcasters in particular. But because of that, usually Terran is not really allowed by the Zerg players to mine 50% of the map. So Battle B's goal here will be to try and mine 50% of all of the resources on the map. Wayne exactly trying to do and prevent that, right? He's trying to make sure that he can take one of those expansions from the Terran. So that way, even if he trades cost inefficiently, he can just reuse some of those resources against the opponent. Already, though, the banks are looking massive here. Both of these players have, well, easy times remaxing. 
Yep, there's just no reason to kind of rush into, uh, like, say, fighting, right? There's not really been, like, a lot of activity this game. It's been fairly, like, there's been fights, but it's been fairly passive overall, so no reason to spend your bank before now, so we really just kind of speed on through into building that bank up. We get it going very quickly, and that's very much so what we're seeing right now, the effects of that and the size that, that bank can become when it goes uh, kind of unhindered and just left to mine throughout, because we've not even really seen many worker kills. 19 Drahoe no. 6 SCVs for the scope of this game. It's pretty tiny. Honestly, the amount of resources lost in total, so we're at like, I don't know, like maybe 25 to 30,000 or so. It's really not even that much, considering the size of the banks here for both of these players. It's been... Like, we're, we're, this kind of could have been the situation we're in at like minute 35, right? And instead, we're already here at not even 21 minutes into the game. Oh, that siege tank is blocking it. Previously, it was a Nidus Worm, now it's a siege tank. Oh, are there any corruptors here? Base has a bad time as uh, we do see one or two corruptors. Obviously, goes trying to get the snipes up from underneath. And we do have the Vikings fighting back. The Vikings are going to put in a lot of work. A few Hydras are going to help to scare those off for the moment, but. And seeing how that continues, we just see how uh, re-engaging. Even the Overseer is actually kind of an expensive loss. They do not come free. As I go, now Vikings continue to chill back, and that's more Corruptors in production on the side of uh, Wayne, so you definitely see in his priority, making sure that he's got that economy, uh, sorry, that uh, air army fixed up and ready to battle as much as possible. Okay, that fungal growth was really lovely, actually. Scaring off that Terran army. Big fungal right now, actually. Not scaring it off anymore. All of the Vikings are going to be slowed down. Even a couple of sport crawlers are coming to the front, but ultimately there may just be enough units right here for the Terran player who's just sniping down and pointing his Vikings at all of those brute lords. I thought that that fight was going to go pretty poorly there for Battleby, but I don't think the entire Zerk squad was present. He's got a lot of units all spread around the map. Bunch of lurkers over here, for example, in the top left hand corner, trying to somehow sidestep past those liberators in the planetary fortress, try to create some chaos, but... All right, that fight, ultimately pretty good for Battleby, who's now taking one of those expansions. Another tactical nuke. Yeah, nukes just kind of continue to power up here. This is honestly kind of wild, right? I mean... Yeah, basically playing a situation where Vallabee is able to keep on taking very good trades, but man, he's got so many of those trades to do because his opponent is just that rich. So we're a long way from seeing a solution to this game uh, kind of figured out or all just yet. I'm just going to be seeing these lives continue to siege up over that left-hand side. Just going to be seeing the workers still firing away where possible. And the snipes all coming through again. Corruptors, Hydras getting pushed back immediately. I mean, Battleby so far can't seemingly lose a fight, so Wayne is definitely struggling here. No. This battle be open strong each and every time they engage. You're absolutely right. Wayne not really fighting nearly as efficiently as he should be aiming for, losing a ton more resources now than his opponent already. And we're not really in a situation yet where we can consider this really an economical advantage for the Zerk, right? I mean, the banks are pretty much even. That'll be at this point is mostly done, I guess, building orbital commands. He's only got seven, Wardy, which is actually pretty, you know, for the stage in the game, we kind of expect like a dozen of them at this moment, I guess, but he's got seven orbital commands, which is respectable to say the least. The one thing I do quite like right here for Wayne is the fact that he's got that base in the far top left. The one that I tried pointing out earlier, he has been mining that one for a while. But I think Battle B is okay not having his opponent uh, dealt with over here. I mean, maybe he can send a Liberator or two to try and harass it. But as long as he takes that mirrored base in the bottom right corner of the map, he should be fine. Yeah, again, it's really kind of about just being able to take these bases, right? And being yeah. able to kind of, you know, if you mine the same amount as a Terran, we've already seen the lack of efficiency from Wayne. And on top of that, we, we talk about how efficiently you should be trading. And I can only agree, like, you know, you don't expect to trade efficiently, but you can't be ha so much kind of efficient. You can't just completely lose everything. And that becomes more and more of a problem as this base becomes attainable by Battle B. Wayne is going to run into a lot of trouble trying to get down to that bottom right-hand corner. So that's definitely going to have an impact the deeper that we go on this one. Absolutely. The micro required on both sides here is very, very substantial. And so far, Bellaby seems to be getting the upper end of basically every exchange. Again, we have Bailings rolling in. I mean, a good unit, of course, if you can get them on top of all of those ghosts. But if not, and it sort of popped like that, that's a lot of resources gone. We have a bunch of Brute Lords right now on the right side of the map, ready to deny another expansion. But I think Bellaby is nicely situated over here, too. Another tactical nuke right on top of his own army. Questionable at... <laughs> at least yeah. but i think he's gonna be moving out of the way in just a sec you would think okay settling uh his, his superiority just like that nuking his own army that's one way of doing it 
Yeah, Ling's all over the place, by the way. They just continue to run around here, there, and everywhere. Again, if Battle B can establish that bottom right side, we keep saying it, but that base is so important. He's, he's doing it slowly. Yeah. I, I think he's just denying it, and he's just slowly getting it. He is not rushing yeah, it's, it because it's, it's so easy good. to be split up. Yeah. So, so here's once again a whole lot of Brute Lords transitioning from another army into Brute Lords once again. The first big wave of Brute Lords did very little. So Wayne is hoping that he can get more value out of this one. The thing that makes those Brute Lords somewhat powerful, I guess, is to get the correct fungal growths and then also parasitic bombs and all of the correct spell casting down. But it's so easy to accidentally slip all of that up. So it's a delicate dance. It's it's between these these armies, I guess, but it's really a big fight between the spellcasters as well. Those Vikings and Brute Lords, they're important, but it really comes down to a lot of the ghosts, a lot of the infestors, and then also a lot of those vipers. And of that last one, I don't think we actually have that many. No, we only have one viper in total. Yeah, the spellcasters, you could argue, are kind of lacking as well, right? I mean, yeah. when you get to this stage of the TVZ, you need spellcasters as a because that's going to be the only way you can really find any sort of good fight. So to be missing those yeah. spellcasters should definitely kind of get alarm bells ringing a little bit. And, uh, yeah, Wayne, I, I like the fact he's keeping the Corrupted Count up, but honestly, yeah, most spellcasters, I think, at this stage are kind of a necessity. You just don't see Zergs win at this point in the game with less spellcasters than this, right? Like, that's just not a thing. That's not a factor. It doesn't happen. You're absolutely right. Wayne at this point has a massive army, but I think he needs to add on a bunch of additional infestors and preferably also a bunch of vipers. That is easier said than done though, because those units require a ton of micro and there's already about 17 moving parts in the Zerk army. So I understand why he's avoiding it for the time being, or at the very least not focusing on it all too much, but that'll be his... Uh... Yeah, inching uh, ahead when it comes to the advantage right now. He's going to be taking that base you've been shouting at him about in just a moment. Pesky little Zerkling burrowed for now, but the, the Liberators are going to be able to make short work of that in just a sec. Yeah, they should be able to. A couple of SCVs go down the center. We have our planetary chilling between all the bases as well. So I'm just going to be sitting out over there and we wait to see what the next uh, part of this plan is from Wayne. Because I think it is really Wayne that has to make a move. Again, now your yep. resource has lost a 16k difference. You are in trouble of potentially being unable to protect this base, which you have to protect because you're already in a bad position. Those are some good fungals no on the Vikings, but where exactly no Vipers, no Parasitic Bombs, there's no follow-up. Now we fungal down to the bottom side to stop the Ghost, but the Vikings win in the sky. If the Vikings win in the sky, the Broodlords are the next target, so they have to go running away. They know they can't just stick around here, and that is a big part of the problem as we continue through. And this is honestly looking to be worse and worse as... This honestly just feels great for Battle B. I mean, he's got bases, yeah. he's got he's got everything realistically. Bottom right, just again, the one base he needs to take, get that back up and go in one small. He's getting but... it. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's getting there eventually. Sorry, it's gonna take him a little while, but we're... <laughs> he's actually building a new command center over there. He wants a fresh, a fresh new Polar CC experience. for this particular spot. Yeah, yeah, of course. Now this uh, this is this is starting to look a little bit desperate right now for Wayne. Like he's got all of the tools at his disposal. But it's just that controlling those tools is so tricky. Love this, by the way, here from Battle B. Using a tactical nuke as well. If it's not spotted, I mean, this guy is having a grand all time. Okay, it does get spotted, but now he was forced to overextend with the Brute Lords in order to achieve that. So the 100 minerals, 100 gas spent on the tactical nuke. It got him a couple additional Brute Lords. And all of these very cost-efficient trades will ultimately lead towards a yeah, significant advantage for the Terran. So this is going to be one of those awkward moments very soon where Wayne has actually mined out all of the minerals that he can mine. The only minerals that will soon be available on this map are going to be in the bottom right and corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is getting to that point, right? We're getting to that stage where it's going to be a pretty big... Uh fight over the bottom right. I mean, the problem for Wayne is he can't put any attention there because his army's so slow moving, so he has to keep it here to defend top left, which is why eventually, maybe if he mines fungal? out top left, he could go bottom Whoa. right, as that is a huge fungal. It hits everything, but there's even more Vikings still to show up. This time, the Parasitic Bombs are on that first half of the Vikings, but the rest of the Vikings are putting in work, Loco. Damage being done across the board. Ghost firing away. Corrupt is taking some big shots, too. I mean, this is crazy, but it is a massive win for Battle B. He will have nowhere near as much rebuilding to be done. Resources lost hugely in his favor. 
That is insane. Like, whenever we see Serral get a fungal like that, it's game over. But now we see Wayne getting basically half the Terran army fungled. And Terran wins that engagement. Great control right there on the end by Battle via No proper follow-up from Wayne. He decided to commit to that fight because he realized that is the, the biggest opportunity I'm going to get here. Yeah. In the meantime, Battle B taking those expansions in the bottom right-hand corner. Yeah, this, uh, he's slowly rebuilding. Maybe he needs to uh, use some of those starports he's got to yeah, max out once again. There we go. We're making some Metavex, a couple Vikings. We're shopping for two units at a time, apparently. We're making two of everything. Yes, 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 we are. Well, we, uh... Just gonna be seeing, I mean, obviously a couple of these spores getting knocked down. It's just gonna be, again, really difficult, right? We're just at this stage where... You know that as Wayne, you've just lost a fight, and what you rebuild is very much so more of the same. And you also just had yeah. such a good fight previously. So, oh, in theory, you should have done, right? Like, it was the best possible start to it. Obviously, it didn't end up good. But this is all being, you know, got to be kind of, to some extent, weighing on your mind here. So, yeah, I really feel like that's a bit of a problem. We do see these uh, Brutalords dropping in. Oh. The Vikings are going to come up. They're going to get aggressive here for a couple moments as well. We do have the Corruptors still giving chases. Vikings and Libs are going to go around it. Yeah, not a lot of uh, missile turrets in this section of the map, so those Corruptors were thinking about chasing. What he really is aiming for, though, is Parasitic Bombs. Great split right there, but that'll be getting rid of that uh, soft unit pretty much right away. Don't bring it back in. That would be... <laughs> there you go. That would be a little bit sloppy. Fungal Growth, Parasitic Bomb, getting that Wombo combo, I think is the only way that Wayne can really properly get an engagement here where we end up winning, because... If he keeps trading the way that he has been over the last few engagements, he is going to fizzle out as much money as he's got in the bank right now. Here we go. A couple of snipes once again end up going down. Big fungal Huge growth fungals. once again. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. The snipes, though, are going to continue here with that fungal growth wearing off. The Vikings also having a grand old time in disguise. GG is cold. And <sighs> battle be, man. Yeah, yeah. What a game. Dominates the late game of this TVZ dominates it every single fight was just absolutely in his favor he was not letting any of these fights go the other way and uh that will very much so be that as we get ourselves to a gg's here but game number one 30 minutes it was a very slow going start right neither player really wanted to do much but you saw why because battleby was just like well i don't need to i'm very comfortable later in the game yeah and so it's definitely kind of all eyes on wayne like hey wayne you got to do something now buddy because if you don't do something here soon you're gonna be in trouble Absolutely. Um, very well done right there by Battleby. It looked very dominant, right? So <laughs> it's funny to see players uh, GGing out whenever they still have a pretty large bank, but I think yeah, Wayne was feeling that that game really wasn't going anywhere anymore. All of those engagements past like minute 25 or so went pretty heavily in favor of the Terran. And in, like I was trying to say, Wayne already mined out all of the bases he was ever going to get, or at least he was close to mining it out. And Battleby just got a fresh new expansion in the bottom right-hand corner that he was going to start mining. So, yeah, he could have stuck in that game for another minute or two, but it would have been an overwhelming advantage at that point for Terran. So he decided to rip off the Band-Aid himself, and we'll see how it goes in game number two. Yeah, time to, time to reset a little bit, time to go again. I mean, Oceanborn is not going to play necessarily the same. It can be a long map, but I think it's much less naturally going to split and stall out like we saw. And maybe Wayne does find something just more mid-game, more early focus to get himself back on track on this series and get himself a map win tied up and send us to a game three, uh, which is definitely very possible still for him. So let's see if he can find a way as we head on into game number two. In the top left-hand side, down a map will be this red Zerg player. It is going to be Wayne. And his opponent down in the bottom right. Some amazing engagements in game number one. Microed very well by none other than Battleby. Yeah, I keep enjoying watching Battleby play. It just feels like we're consistently seeing him... Uh, consistently seeing him just kind of play to a high level. Consistently kind of impress. Just very cool to see. Very happy to see him doing well. And every time I see him, it's always like a pleasure to watch him. Like he might not be going out there and winning every single time, but you can see the potential is there and he keeps refining. And at some point I feel mm -hmm. like he's just going to pop off one day. And everyone's going to be like, wait, what battle beat did this or that or whatever. And then somebody's like, well, yeah, you know, honestly, we kind of saw this coming, you know, like he's been yeah. improving. He's been on the up and up for years. Yeah, exactly. And he's still, yeah, I, I feel like I've been watching Battle Beat play for like five years and he's only 21 years old at this point in time. Yeah. So 
He's young. He's been making, he's yeah. been making, yeah, he's still a young player, but he's been making a lot of improvements for many years, and it's still like an upwards trajectory, you know? Like you see players sometimes sort of stabilize at a certain MMR, I guess, or like a certain skill level, but that'll be definitely uh, still making progression. Yep. Still making progression. So let's see. Let's see. And uh, I honestly just hope he has a really good run in one of these seasons, one of these regionals. Maybe this is the start of it. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be really cool to see him like make playoffs and see what he can do there. It'd be freaking awesome. So, yeah, uh, we'll see what Wayne does. Wayne's been one of those players that's actually not always making playoffs, but is fairly consistently there as well. So, always cool to see him being active, looking good. And, uh, it's actually been pretty darn good. I feel like Wayne goes through these phases where sometimes I watch him play. I'm like, huh, that wasn't so great. And then the next time I watch him play, I'm like, man, he really can't still beat anyone. <laughs> so. Yeah, keep, keep in mind, he had a good opportunity in that previous game, right? So he lost three Lurkers right before his Lurker timing, and then with the leftover units that he still had, he decided to go up a choke point into a ramp. Like, it was all just a little bit of a mess there. I think if that, like, I don't know, sequence of 30 seconds or so would have gone better for him, he probably would have been able to shut down the Terran at, like, you know, their four command center built and... Uh, we, we, yeah, we probably uh, would have been on this map quite a while earlier. So Wayne definitely still created opportunities for himself, but this is going to put a lot of pressure on him because I think he's going to be avoiding that late game to the best of his chances. Like, he, he's not going to want to play a late game like that again. No, I don't think he is. I think uh, he showed or he was shown that his opponent's very competent in that stage of the game. So now there's just no real reason he'd want to go for that round two. So just reset. And uh, except this is going to have to be a little bit different. But to be fair, if I back in Wayne here, I think he can play very differently. Like, he does not necessarily always want to play for that late game. So he's very experienced yep. being able to kind of do things differently anyways. So I guess that's kind of a factor as well. Yeah, maybe also Battleby, by the way, wasn't actually intending on playing the late game necessarily like that, but he forgot combat shields, remember? It's been a while, but mm. his uh, his timing attacks sort of were thrown out of the window when he realized, wait a second, every single attack with Marines sort of requires that, uh, that style to, well, at the very least have 10 additional hit points on my units. So maybe he also didn't really intend on playing a long macro game there necessarily right from the start, but ended up working out for him there. So far, by the way, just a quick triple CC opener right here for Battleby. Transitioning not so much to watch the starport on the back of it, but a second barracks. Yeah. Second barracks coming up, which means that we can really get set up uh, quite nicely for a couple of moments. Gonna be seeing that factory, gonna relocate a little bit as well. Yeah, just a couple of moments again set. As we have the uh, two barracks coming in, so that will be a lot of Marines, that timing window to get some damage done early. Against a fast lair of Wayne, who's not really going for any other tech alongside this, if Wayne does something like very fast muters here, he could be in a lot of mm -hmm. trouble against like a 16 marine drop. Now, not saying that's definitely what Wayne is going for, but that lair is quick. There's no bane nest down. There's not really any setup at all for the future, so I guess we're about to see. Yeah, no bane uh, nest, no, no roach warren either. What are the alternatives? Hydra then, I guess? We have seen Mio Micah play with some very quick Hydra Dents. Maybe that is what we have got going over here. I don't think that's the strongest style to go for, but we have no tech at all. It is indeed going to be a straight Spire. Bailing Nest on the back of it as well, so... Wayne is going to... Probably could have started up the Bailing Nest a little earlier in that case if he had money for both, but... Anyways, he apparently felt like he did not need it. But you're absolutely right, though. Marine pushes are scary against this. Now it's just going to be Queens and... A bunch of slows, or not slow Zerklings, but a bunch of regular Zerklings without any upgrades, without any Banelings. Yep, no, it's going to be a little bit of a, a funky one for sure as we get settled up. Just have ourselves a few moments of readying here and wait to see where we go. See it's a 60 Marine drop with 14 Marines. Oh, that's a, that's a new one. Yeah, that's a new one. Yeah, sometimes the numbers don't. It's funny quite because every right. StarCraft fan knows exactly what that means, you know. Oh, there's actually <laughs> even less than that. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> it is really a 60 Marine drop, but it's but you know just less Marines. <laughs> that only makes sense if you've watched a lot of StarCraft. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like a triple Reaper opener with two Reapers. It's perfectly viable, but anyways, Queens pretty much the only line of defense, but there are some slow banglings. And oh, sorry about that, guys. That was room in the plane, but didn't get when picked invited. up. They went invited. Yeah. No. <laughs> that medevac is empty too. I wonder what they said to the medics. 
Ooh, getting oh, a wrap around right getting... here on the Hellions. Okay. That'll be slipping up a little bit here in game number two. I was going to say, not going to be getting high the second time at this rate. <laughs> a little bit of Ling Bane comes by. And just settle down. One on upgrades, combat shield coming about as well. Nine Nuras, though, coming up right now for Wayne. And that is where the Zerk will take full map control. I don't think Battle B realizes exactly what he's playing against just yet. Main downside for Zerk with this opener is that those Evo Chamber upgrades are exceptionally late. So Battle B will likely be starting up 2-2 around the time that Zerk starts up 1-1. But these Mutas are completely unscouted. At the very least, I don't think he's seen them yet, but he did start up a Missile Turret at the third. So that's actually super handy. None of that though inside of the main base. And he's actually, ooh, did he just all army hotkey the Mutas back? I think he did. Yeah. yeah they're a little bit delayed now. Yep, they're going to take a couple moments to get across here. So I'm just waiting for those and then they'll be able to show up. But Missile Turret's obviously on the way and Battle B currently is looking to get set up in a nice way to be able to deal with this. So, I mean, honestly, these mirrors get deflected and this defense is looking good for now. Looking great so far. Yeah, and this is that moment where I feel like Muta openers just aren't that amazing. You know, like you kind of rely on tricking your opponent almost because you delay your upgrades for such a long time. Basically, for the next... Until Zerk finishes up 3-3, if we're ever going to get to that point. But until that moment, Battle B is going to be ahead in upgrades. So all of those Ling Bane fights are going to be a little bit worse for Zerk than they normally would be. Now, of course, we have Mutas instead, which is nice and all, but we see those going down so frequently. So look at that. 2-2 two -two for Terran has already begun a while ago, and now finally 1-1 one -one has started for the Zerk. So these upgrades are so much later than they would be with any other build. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a huge difference that it makes, and it does really add up over the course of time as well, right? So, upgrades do cost you. It's one of the prices of going for these Mutalisks and having to go for them like you did. I mean, not, no one made you do that, but choosing to go for them like you did really does then have that cost of, well, you better, you know, do well with the Mutas. And again, if you don't, then yeah. that's kind of on you. That's kind of, uh, I don't want to say your fault, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you put yourself in that position, and you're the one that's then got to dig your way out of it. So Battle B is saying, yeah, you want to play passively? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, this one if you want to push me into this corner, that is where I like to live. Remember game number one? This is where I want to be. This is uh, yeah, what, what made me win game one pretty smoothly there. So Battle B sitting back once more goes into a, a Thor right now too to really help out. Now you still have to be careful though because that Ling Bane Muta army is not to be underestimated. Up a ramp into Widowmines. Not where Wayne wants to be, but there are still opportunities here for the Zerk to get some damage in. But Battle B, more than happy to just sit back and, well, keep on macroing. Yep, sit back and chill. I do see him. About to have his 2 2, so he'll be able to take a lot of fights once he has 2 2 from there. And now he's going to maintain an upgrade lead all over again for a long time. And, uh, I mean, I think the biggest concern is, right, your opponent's playing a lot of meters, so if you ever move out onto the map, you're terrified of the counterattack where the mutas just rip your bases apart, so he's respecting that. He's playing it very slowly instead and just kind of hanging back at home mm. instead, so that's what he goes for. And uh, that's where we currently sit. Yeah, crossing his T's, dotting his eyes over here, grabbing as many of those missile turrets as he feels like he needs. Burrowing, uh, or burrowing Widow Mines Rudder. Here we go, though. This is the moment where apparently the Zerk decides to collapse on top of this entire Terran army. That one Thor having a grand old time. Good splits right there on the Marines on the right side. On the creep, a little bit more difficult to pull off. Now, reinforcing Terran units show up. Stimpak gets reactivated. And Battle B does push back this Zerk force. I'll just push it back. He's chasing down a little bit. He's going to get some creep tumors at the very least. Start to clear up some of the middle of the map. Make the future of this game a little bit more attainable for himself. So away goes Battle B. Off on a little bit of a mission there. A few more of these creep tumors are still going to end up being shot down as well. So we work our way through those. And again, make as much progress as possible as this of mine goes off. Splashes some of the Terran units. So not exactly ideal. As more Banes come through, obviously still having the creep spread here, but this position from Battle B is pretty darn good. A tank to support it, yeah. reinforcements on the way, catching a bunch of free units. He's getting a lot of shots off on units when they're just kind of arriving and so on, so that's going a huge distance as well. It really feels like Battle B, man. He's up a bit of supply. He's looking good right now. He's got so many Banelings, though, to contest with here in just a moment. The Zerkman count is relatively low, but I'm a little afraid that Battle B could be overextending just a tad. He doesn't really need to be sitting here onto the creep. Now, the Mutas are going across. I like that a lot, although the Widow Mines ooh, just barely get picked off. These Widow Mines also will try and set off 
Bulbasaur will be set off rather by the Zerg and ultimately this position will get cleaned up. Lots of Mutas going down though in the process. Additional ones popped out of the sky right now too. But I'll be forced to go all the way back home, but I think he will be relatively happy to do so. Here come those Bailings though that I was talking about. Widow Mine! Ooh, almost connecting with everything. Yeah, uh, Wayne maybe needs to think about how far he's going to chase because when the splits come through here, these Bailings are not really finding any good connections. Did we get rid of enough and Marines that the Mutas can be effective? Well, at the very least, one away to Ultras now. Wayne ended up doing pretty Oof. well. I mean, he reset a lot of the supply count from his opponent there, so that really took a, yeah. a big swing, and that's a, a big deal right now. I think that was a bit of an overextension right there from Battleby, just parked out onto the creep, taking a little bit of a camping trip right there on the Zerk side of the map. And then suddenly all of those Zerk reinforcements show up. I like the transition here towards Ultras. Mostly because Battle B will be unlikely to really have a ton of ghosts here anytime soon, because you don't really go ghosts against Mutaling Bane based armies. If you can suddenly show up with a bunch of Ultras here, Wayne may actually be able to catch the Terran off guard. But Planetary Fort is coming up over on the right side of the map. That's going to be the fifth base for Battle B. You should have a very solid economy. Yep. Absolutely. As our Ling Muta just going to take a couple moments, knock down some rocks, open up some space. And then we've seen a few Marines come through, and they're going to go after a couple of Crypt Tumors and again just clear up some of the map. But this is a big changing point in the game, because now you're going to see the Ghost Academy come down. Battle Bee's realizing, okay, I can't just play this aggressive bio game anymore. I'm going to have to have yep. some higher tech support, and that's going to be in the form of those... <laughs> that's disgusting. Um, it's going to have to be in the uh, form of those Ghosts, so he's going to have to slow it down to tech up, and that's just going to, again, change the entire pace of this game, which has been very fast-paced and action-packed so far. That'll be starting to push again, but the ultras are popping. It is not time to go fighting. Absolutely not. Battle B, by the way, delaying his upgrades 3 3 for a long while there, and he's still leading as far as those goes. He did not upgrade there because he thought he had an opportunity to win. In the meantime, though, the muter count, okay, does jump right on top of the missile turret. No easy way of repairing your way out of that. Marauder stimming forward to try and chase down the mutas, but. They're gonna have a tough time as well. And suddenly those Mutas are finally getting some of that value. Push as well onto the creep. I like it, but it's very dangerous when your name is not Clem to micro multiple engagements, especially onto creep. So he does decide to back off and, and chases down these units. Hey, the cheeky little Widow Mine in the corner. Those triple Got some Widow work Mines. Done. Those three Widow Mines off to the right hand side. If that Medivac can kind of bait these Mutas across there, that would be great. They might target fire down the missile turret, and hoo -hoo, that was dangerous. Yeah, the idea there was very good from uh, Battle B, but the response was better from Wayne, of course, as he is still kind of flying these meters about. I mean, I guess at this point he doesn't really want them, I can only assume, because he's really being quite careless with them. This planetary fortress may live as we lose Ultras. Oh! We're not going to be able to have the DPS to get rid of it. Wayne just throws so much for nothing. Oh my god, that's a huge amount of money given away, and suddenly Battle B has almost doubled the army supply local, and he's coming across the map to fire up a storm. Corrupt as a building, they ain't useful right now. Oh god, he just lost the game, no? Maybe not lost, I think he may have bad. just lost the game, yeah. The repair on that planetary was pretty late, and I think he saw an opportunity, but then right at that same time, he, well, activated the repair on all of those SCVs, and then he decided to double down. Suddenly, that Terran army is looking mighty powerful. Corruptors, not the unit necessary here at all. Maybe they were made to try and deal with the Liberator transition, but the Liberator transition is no longer important here for Battle B because he is smelling blood in the water. GG is cold, and it's Battle B.